the last YouTube video I made, in my opinion, was a little bit lackluster. So it was suggested to me that um, maybe this was so because I wasn't in my car. So here I am in my car, which is parked in my driveway, and I'm going to make hopefully a less shitty YouTube video for you guys. So I don't really have a whole lot to talk about. So I asked for some recommendations on Instagram and I got a few ideas. I'm not sure if any of these ideas warrant an entire lengthy video. So I'm gonna to respond to several of these ideas in this one video, okay? All right, here we go. Also, please enjoy my background of trash cans. So there were a lot of requests for things like just general vlogs and like a pantry tour and a refrigerator tour but I haven't been to the grocery store in about 11 days right now. I'm doing my Instacart pickup tomorrow, so it might be a little bit interesting after that. Right now, I basically just have orange juice and frozen bananas and like a few drops of oat milk left. I'm just gonna feed the kids coffee for dinner. Another person wanted to know about my self-care routine, meaning like how do I chill uh, aside from doing yoga? So obviously yoga is my number one strategy for chilling, but I also walk my dog slash dogs if I have dreidel with me too. If I'm feeling extremely stressed out and overwhelmed, going outside in nature, ignoring my phone and walking McFluffin, I find really, really relaxing. It does the trick quite often. I will say this, I wish that I was a heavy drinker because I feel like that would be a really great activity during a pandemic. My body doesn't agree with alcohol, so I have the occasional drink, but really it's not part of my self-care routine. That's really terrible advice. Don't drink, you guys. It's bad for you. Another thing that I would say is I'm not the type of person to just let myself go because I'm not leaving the house. I'm not going to like let my hair get all dirty and gross, and I'm not going to just... Well, I do kind of wear sweatpants, but I mean, seriously, keep yourself up. Like, wash your hair, brush your hair, shave your legs, like, keep your shit tight, you know, do your exercises, do all that stuff. I don't, it doesn't matter that you're not going out of the house. You do those things, at least I do those things for me. So I feel good. I don't give a fuck if some dipshit at a grocery store sees me without shaved legs. I want them shaved because I like them. And please don't start in with me on this. Like the world is oppressing you because you don't want to have body hair. Like I, I just, that's not for me. Listen, if you feel oppressed, uh, by razors and feminine care products. That's your deal. It's not mine. I find those things liberating. Are you guys aware of this free bleeding movement that's happening that's super duper popular right now? Like I cannot open my Instagram without seeing a post of a woman holding a fucking jar of her menstrual blood or showing a picture of her bloody inner thighs as she's just letting herself bleed all the fuck over the place all over town you know we're supposed to be at home quarantining and people are showing like their bloody thighs of them free bleeding out and about what is this i mean that's fine if you want to do that i personally do not feel oppressed by feminine care products I personally have never noticed a stigma with female menstruation, which I guess this is a, a rebellion against just letting yourself bleed all over the place. But like, if you want to do that, like totally, that's your deal. Do it. But do we have to put everything on the internet? The, the defense for it is, well, it's not gross. It's just natural. Like it's natural. Yes. Menstruation is natural. Do you know what else is natural? Me taking a shit, that's natural. Me peeing, that's natural. A guy jizzing, that's natural too. Should we walk around and just free shit our pants and let it like squish all over our underwear and topple out of our pant leg? Is that what we're doing now? Should I just urinate in a grocery store line because it's natural and I feel oppressed by something? I just don't get it. And these women showing these jars of their menstrual blood, are you really like, are you collecting it in your diva cup and then like opening up a jar next to your toilet and dumping it in there and saving it? And what are you doing with your blood? And why are you saving it? Why do you think it's so sacred? It's just another body fluid. 
I mean, it's not not sacred. It's part of you. Cool, it's sacred. But what do you need it for? Are you saving it for something? Wouldn't it be funny if like the answer to the coronavirus was found in like the plasma of menstrual blood or something? That would be, that would be something else. Anyway, my apologies for getting off track there. The free bleed movement is, uh, that's a good one. I mean, do your free bleed movement, but I'm going to fucking make fun of you. You better believe it. Me and everyone in my household, we're going to be fucking laughing at you. Not oppressing you. Just, I'm sorry. If you're posting a picture of yourself with your bloody thighs or your menstrual blood in a jar, I, maybe I'm immature. Maybe I, I find that shit funny and I'm going to make fun of it. So also had a request to make a video about breast implants and do you need to change them every 10 years and breast implant illness. Um, I've made a video about my breast implants like many years ago. You can check that out if you want. Uh, but I don't know the answer to these questions. I know that uh, plastic surgeons will tell you you don't necessarily need to change them out. But I can tell you from my experience and most of my girlfriend's experiences that have breast implants, it's not like a one shot deal. You're going to want to you're going to want to, you know, upgrade in a, you know, 10, 15 years or something. But I don't know enough about this to make a video about it or even comment on it. I know that breast, breast implant illness is a real thing. It's not something that I've experienced. Um, I know a lot of women with breast implants and I have never, uh, I don't know anyone that's had issues with them. So I can't speak to that on a personal level. So pass. There was another request for me to talk about uh, vegans that eat honey and backyard eggs. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about this. Uh, honey is an animal product, so it's it's not technically vegan. But I, to be perfectly honest with you, I mean, I, I don't eat honey. I do. The only th reason I miss honey sometimes is if you have like a really bad cough or if you have a child with a really bad cough and you can't just give them honey. Um, that's just the only thing I miss about it. But for me personally, maple syrup tastes way better than honey anyway. Plus honey's bee vomit, which is kind of grody. Um, but anyway, I will say that uh, to be perfectly honest, um, honey doesn't offend me as deeply as slitting an animal's throat. You know, don't eat honey. There's other options. What do you need honey for? Um, and then the backyard eggs thing, I just... <laughs> You know, it's the same thing. It's like the chickens aren't there for you to use. Um, am I going to get into a big debate about whether or not someone can call themselves vegan if they have backyard chickens or whatever? I don't really care. Like, I don't really give a fuck if somebody calls themselves a vegan and they're not technically like I just don't. I just don't care. Like I'm not super attached to the word and the meaning of the word. And I know that a lot of people are, and they have good reason to be, but I personally don't have that attachment to it. I mean, if you're having backyard eggs, like, okay, I get that you've made the effort to, to be kinder or more conscious about your eggs, but it's like, I just feel bad for you. Cause you're just, I mean, how dumb it's just dumb. Like, right. You're going through all this effort, getting these chickens, building a coop in your backyard. You have to feed the chickens. It's the coop is like full of shit. It smells. It's just a big hassle. You got to go through just to get yourself some eggs so you can eat that they're super unhealthy for you anyway. It's just the whole thing is dumb. Like aside from being, a, you know, offensive to the animals and using animals, it's just, you're just kind of stupid, you know? Just use some fucking flax meal and put some warm water with it. it. Turns into something that's like an egg, yet it also has like fiber and other nutrients in it, and it's not high in cholesterol. It's just, it's just get a fucking clue with your dumb backyard egg chicken coops. It's so retarded. Sorry to use that word. It's so silly. So I had one request to do a Q&A with my daughter, Hayes, who's 13. And then I had another request to do like a daily uh, vlog with like being in quarantine as a parent and my kids and what we're doing and stuff. And I'm going to not do that. I recently, not recently, but a while back, I did a what my 13 year old daughter eats in a day video with my daughter Hayes in it. 
And um, while the vast majority of people are really sweet, um, I don't have my kids in YouTube videos very often anymore. It's pretty seldom nowadays. And they don't go on my Instagram. Once in a while, you'll see them in the stories, but not on my Instagram page, generally speaking, um, because I didn't enjoy some of the comments that I got that were directed at my daughter. I didn't like that for her. And so I decided to just not, maybe not do that sort of thing anymore. Um, I know that there's a lot of controversy about uh, parents that put their kids in their YouTube videos and I, not really recently, but I have gotten quite a few questions about that in the past because there's a lot of YouTubers that have their kids in their videos a lot. And I will say this about that is that I think every family is different, vastly, vastly different. Um, so I think that it should be up to hopefully the responsible parents to make the right decision for their family and what they're doing. But I will say that for me personally, if my income were in any way reliant upon my children, uh, I just feel like that's maybe like some dangerous territory or like I, I just wouldn't want to be in that position to have my income rely in part or in whole upon my kids. I think the same thing goes for like parents who have kids that, you know, act professionally or model professionally and they are using that money uh, that their children are making. I think that that is, I don't know, that doesn't, something about it doesn't sit right with me. And I'll also say this, I think most of the children that I, we see online and in YouTube videos and on people's Instagrams, I think most of those children tend to be a lot younger than my kids. My kids are now 13 and 15. And let me tell you, <laughs> what's cool with a six-year-old boy to be out there in the world is not fucking cool with a 15-year-old boy. Maybe it's cool if the child grows up in this way and they're totally used to being online and they're used to like strangers knowing what they look like and they don't think twice about the fact that, you know, they're like, maybe it's a little girl and she's topless and, or maybe there it's a little boy and he's breastfeeding or whatever, like a six-year-old boy might not really care. But when you get to the age of 15 and to be teenagers, um, and they have a group of peers that are around that, that can then go and see this older content where they're running around in diapers or whatever, like, you know, there's not too many teenage boys or maybe girls either that are going to be super chill with that. So I think it's maybe something that not some of these parents are thinking about because it wasn't something that I thought about. I mean, I started doing social media when my kids were much younger and I think that they were on, you know, little glimpses of them on my YouTube videos. It never really revolved around my children, but there were more. And I never, I never thought of that. Like I never thought of how are they going to feel in 10 years time when, you know, <laughs> when everything's awkward and everything's embarrassing and stuff. I never thought about that. So I don't know. So that's, that's why I'm not going to, uh, probably make a video based on my kids. I mean, I don't know. Although my kids are at an age where they know what it means to be on social media. And my son is very clearly like, no, I don't want to be on your social media. So like, it's even rare that you'll see a glimpse of him on my story because he doesn't want that. Um, the times that he is on my story, I always say, is this cool? And he'll be like, yeah, you know, whatever. I would never put something out there. Um, and then my daughter, she understands what it means to be out there. But, you know, just based on that YouTube video I've made of her, what I ate in a day thing, I just, I didn't like it. So I was just like, mm, I, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to expose her to that. Being 13 is hard enough without a bunch of fucking idiot YouTube trolls commenting on your attitude or whatever the fuck is wrong with them. So, yeah. So there were quite a few other YouTube video requests on there, but this video is just getting way too long. So um, maybe we'll get to them in another video. Anyway, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you're healthy and happy. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys real soon. Mwah.